So what is the best medication for panic attacks? First of all, what is a panic attack? A panic attack is that sudden episode of intense fear or extreme anxiety where you experience physical symptoms such as chest tightness, feeling like you cannot breathe, feeling sweaty, clammy, trembling, shaking, your heart is racing so fast, basically you feel that you're about to die. And this episode can last from a few minutes to a few hours till you either leave the situation or you find a way to start to calm down. Now a trigger for your panic attack could be something as little as seeing someone you do not want to see crossing the road towards you and then your heart starts racing. Or you could be watching something on TV or hearing something on the radio which triggers a flashback or memory. Or maybe you have a job interview, an exam, driving test, or you have to do a presentation at a meeting. For some people, there are no triggers and they just get that sense of impending doom that something bad is about to happen. And usually, 99% of the time, nothing bad actually happens. You know that your reaction is out of proportion with the situation, but there's simply nothing you can do to prevent it. At least that's what you feel. So these triggers might be trivial to somebody else, but for you, it's a big deal. It's major. And this is what prompts the patient to come to the doctor. Doctor, I need something for my panic attacks and something that works quickly because these panic attacks now becoming more frequent and they're interfering with your home life or your job. So what is the best medication for panic attacks? So basically, you just narrow it down to two choices. There is diazepam and there is propanolol. I'll break down these two medications and I'll be telling you which one of these two medications should be the top choice for treating panic attacks. Now diazepam is an anti-anxiety and hypnotic medication that is very effective for panic attacks. It works by increasing the level of chemicals in your brain called GABA that helps you to calm down and relax and it starts to take effect quite quickly within 15 to 16 minutes depending on the person. So for one person it can take 5 minutes and for another person it can take 45 minutes. Diazepam is usually given as a 2 mg dose which you can take once a day or 3 times a day. So it is quite a low dose that if you space them apart, they should not make you feel sleepy. Bear in mind that diazepam is also used as a sleeping tablet and that's because it has a sedative effect especially at 5 mg and 10 mg doses. So it is used for people who suffer from insomnia and it's also used as a muscle relaxant medication if you're undergoing surgery or if you're having muscle spasms such as back pain for instance. It is also used for seizures, alcohol withdrawal, and various other uses. Propanolol is a beta blocker and very effective at reducing the physical symptoms of panic attacks, which are the heart racing fast, feeling sweaty, the trembling, and other symptoms. So for example, it reduces your heart rate by binding to the beta receptors in your heart, which blocks the release of the stress hormones called your noradrenaline and adrenaline, which is responsible for the fight or flight response. Propanolol can be taken as a 10 mg dose up to three to four times a day, which is useful as a lower dose means that there is less interaction with other medications that you might be taking, as well as lesser side effects compared to the higher doses of 40 milligrams, which you can take once a day or three times a day. There is also an 80 milligram sustained release dose of propanolol, which is more convenient if you just want to take one tablet that's going to last you the whole day rather than the inconvenience of having to take 40 milligram tablet twice a day. Like diazepam, propanolol has other uses such as for migraines, benign essential tremors, and for high blood pressure, though it's not commonly used for treating high blood pressure. Now, which would be the best choice, diazepam or propanolol? I'll pick propanolol over diazepam for these reasons. Diazepam is quite addictive if taken for long periods, so it's only used short term for treatment of panic attacks, as well as if you have sleeping problems, while propanolol can be used long term as unlike diazepam, it is not addictive. Diazepam also has issues with tolerance, which means if you've been taking it at certain doses for a while, it stops working, so you would now need to take at higher doses to achieve the same effect that you previously experienced at lower dose. Even at a lower dose of 2 mg, diazepam can potentially reduce your alertness, your reaction times, your concentration levels, so it's not the ideal drug to take before a driving test, for instance, or if you're about to present at a meeting in which case you should go for propanolol. Now propanolol does not have as many cons, but it is known to slow your heart rate down to the point where you can get dizziness and fatigue, which is why the lower doses of 10 milligrams are preferable for some, especially the elderly. Also, if you're asthmatic, you might not be able to take propanolol 
because your lung also contains beta receptors which propanolol can bind to which can cause constrictions or spasms of your airways leading to wheeze and shortness of breath. So make sure you have an inhaler if you're going to take propanolol and you're asthmatic. So propanolol can cause diversion of blood flow from the peripheries of the hands and the feet towards the heart which can cause cold hands and feet and in some men who take propanolol they do complain of erectile dysfunction. Propanolol does not also work as quickly as diazepam which usually works within 15 minutes while propanolol can take as much as 30 minutes to work. So if you have a meeting at three o'clock, it might be worthwhile taking propanolol at say two o'clock. So despite all this, I would still say that propanolol would be my top choice over diazepam just because it's not addictive, there's no tolerance levels, you don't have to worry about reduced alertness or concentration, and you can pretty much titrate propanolol at different doses from 10 milligrams to 20 to 30 to 40, up to 80 milligrams in some cases, while diazepam is quite restricted in the dose that you can take before it starts to act as a sleeping medication. Propanolol can also be taken long term or like diazepam which is usually prescribed as a short term medication. I mean there are other groups of medications which can help with panic attacks such as your selective serotonin receptor inhibitors otherwise known as the SSRIs such as your sertralines, your paroxetines, your citalopram's, acetalopram. However, these medications are not like your on-demand drugs like your propanolols and your diazepam. So for example, if you had a meeting at three o'clock and you took surgery at two o'clock, it's not going to work because these medications take two to three weeks to build into your system and you have to be taking them long-term every day for a few months for it to have any effect. And on the one day you miss your sertraline medication, for instance, you might start having withdrawal side effects. Whereas medications like propanolol and diazepam, you can pretty much take them on that very day. And it's not med these are not medications that you take all the time. You can maybe take propanolol once a week, for instance, or once every two weeks, depending on the occasion and what the trigger might be. Now, I'm not an advocate for taking, you know, medications for, you know, panic attacks or anxiety. I usually emphasize that it is very important that you explore non-medication options, such as, for example, psychotherapy, usually what we call cognitive behavioral therapy, such as CBT, has been proven to be very effective for knowing and learning coping strategies to manage your anxiety better. You know, there are self-help guides like Mood Gym, you can also, you know, think about relaxation techniques, you know, breathing techniques when you're having panic attacks. These are non-pharmacological options that would help you manage your anxiety more in the long term than having to rely on medications which have side effects on the body. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to share, like and comment.